All right. Hello, hello, everyone. Today, I've got a case study about prostate cancer, a man with prostate cancer. This person came to us with this problem. We gave them our advice, and it appears he has improved, and I assume he's going to keep getting better. I should really put in a disclaimer here before we start. This is not treatment. We're not talking about treatment. Doctors do treatment because treatment is drugs, tests, and surgeries. We're not doing treatment. In fact, we don't want to treat a problem. We want to help a person get healthy. We want to supply the body with what it needs to work properly. We want to take away the things that aggravate the system. In this case here, you can see I've got this billboard, very famous billboard, hot dogs cause butt cancer, processed meats increase colorectal cancer risk. This is at least one thing that contributes to the problem in the first place. Whether it was inflammation or pulps in the colorectal region, certain foods are aggravating it, nutrient deficiencies are going to be involved, and what we're doing is just not treating. We're just helping this man get healthy. Excellent book I recommend on this subject for people who are dealing with prostate cancer or just want to know more about it. You should know several things that are in this book. The Invasion of the Prostate Snatchers. Because the regular medical world knows that prostate inflammation or prostate cancer in general is not the scariest thing in the world. It's not blood cancer. It's not a brain tumor. It's a slow growing thing that is very unlikely to actually claim the life of the person with the problem. And there's other clues in the mainstream world for dealing with prostate inflammation or prostate cancer. Antibiotics are commonly used with men who have prostate inflammation or prostate cancer, and that tends to get a good result. We're not talking about cures here. We're talking about a gland that has inflammation. This area here, this is the bottom of the digestion tract. This is where your probiotics live. They live down here at the bottom in the large intestine before it turns into the rectum. Right, your good bacteria live down here. So if there's a problem in this environment, I'm imagining it's going to be a problem in one of these organs. The bladder comes down from the kidneys. Could be a problem there, a nutrient deficiency, but it's most likely something is up with this digestion environment, especially at the end of the system here. Large intestine, rectum. Prostate's caught up in the middle of all this, right? And that's why when this part gets inflamed, the prostate, men can have problems with their bladder or with their testicles, painful ejaculation. As you see here on the list of symptoms, most of them are just about urinating and ejaculating. And here we kind of randomly have pain in the back and hips and pelvis. What? Yeah, I bet. I bet there's a problem in this part of the body and that there's nutrient deficiencies. But of course, that's going to be uncomfortable. So I know this is kind of a long case, so it's going to be kind of a long video. So I'm trying to make it fairly comprehensive here, just showing you what we're looking at when we're looking at a prostate problem. And I don't assume cancer right away, by the way. I assume inflammation. If they come to us and say, I've been told I have cancer. Well, OK, that's a different story. But they have difficulty starting urination. They have weak or interrupted flow of urine. They're urinating often, especially at night. Could be a blood sugar problem in there as well. Often is, I assume things go hand in hand. A man with a prostate problem probably also has a blood sugar problem. They're both caused by processed foods and nutrient deficiencies, so wouldn't be surprising to see them together, and we often see them together. People who have a serious problem such as prostate cancer, almost never is that their only problem. In fact, I can't remember any case where that was the only problem. People who have cancer come with a list of other problems, typically blood sugar as well. It's just part of the package. So they also have trouble emptying the bladder completely, pain or burning during urination, blood in the urine or semen, and of course the pelvic pain and painful ejaculation. So what I've done is taken our conversation from Instagram and email and just kind of put them together on here. I omitted some things and I summarized some things. And actually, when this person came to us, I wasn't the one who answered him, Catherine. Catherine works with me. She was the one who answered it. And for a long time, she would leave these kind of cases for me, the more difficult cases or the scarier cases, big, big C word here. But I believe this was back in October of 2022. We're currently in March 2023. So this started just a few short months ago and he's seen some result. That's pretty typical. I don't expect miraculous results in a week. I do expect at least a few months. And typically with people, I expect one, two, three months for them to even kind of really get started, really get the ball rolling. With cancer, I hope they take it more serious, but just people in general, they tend to take a few months to really get started, really implement all the changes. So this person is actually reaching out about his dad. My dad has stage four prostate cancer. Don't really care what stage it is. 
but it does say that this is kind of an emergency. Let's not waste time here. He was meant to have it removed, but unfortunately it spread past prostate and he has to start chemo next week. Okay, that's not good. The man's now going to be poisoned. Now we have to overnourish to make up for the chemo. We're working uphill now with chemo, but it's spread, right? Okay, emergency. I've had him go on a strict vegan diet for the past three weeks and he takes black seed oil, wild oregano oil, and latrial. Latrial is B17, said to be an anti-cancer compound. I'm going to ignore all three of these because these are all medicines. Those are not nutrient-based things. Oregano oil is probably a tincture. It's a medicine. So Catherine said, standard, thank you for reaching out to us. She said, we don't recommend a vegan diet as we are meant to be omnivores. Although any diet change can show results in the beginning as people tend to stop the bad foods, right? This is why diets tend to work at least a little bit, even opposite diets. Vegan diet gets results. Carnivore diet gets results. Keto, macrobiotic, the virgin diet. Most of these diets get results as long as they get off the processed foods or the more that a diet removes processed foods, the better general results you will get. But she's right here. We recommend being omnivores. We don't really care about the diet. We care about foods that you don't eat. And we care about the 90 essential nutrients, which are not going to be there in proper proportions, no matter what diet you choose, whether it's vegan or carnivore. And the more extreme the diet, the more holes it's going to have, especially vegan and carnivore. So without saying more, she did the right thing. She says, we can give you our best advice when our questionnaire is completed. Just need more information. Gave the questionnaire. I have other videos on that if you want to learn more about that, about why those questions and so on. But right now we've got a 61 year old man, 185 centimeters, it's just about six feet, 118 kilograms is about 260 pounds. So he's overweight. I'm a bit taller than him and he's about a hundred pounds heavier than me. Prostate cancer is his main symptom. Osteomyelitis is pretty serious actually, that's a bone infection. So we can tell he's been in poor health here. This is a serious immune deficiency so is cancer. All the same nutrients that are needed for your immune system, those are all the ones that you're going to hear people talking about them being anti-cancer. Selenium, vitamin D, zinc, vitamin C, etc. Like I said, I don't care about these herbs or supplements. I wouldn't call them supplements. These are medicinal herbs. These are medicines and they're of no consequence here. Cancer is not caused by a lack of medicine. He was diagnosed only three weeks ago. Okay, so we, we caught him quick here, but we didn't really catch him quick because he's been in bad shape. He lost some weight so far. Okay, from the vegan diet. Okay, well, that's good. He was very overweight, so it should start to come off quickly when adjustments are made. And vegan's extreme, so he probably will lose some weight. Sertraline's a little bit of a weird drug. This is for, like, obsessive compulsive disorder, dysphoria, sometimes depression. Just has nothing to do with cancer. And there is withdrawal concerns to this type of a drug, but I can't legally tell him what to do about drugs. So I'm going to ignore that for now. Two coffees daily. Generally, that's okay for an adult, especially an adult male. But I wouldn't think that coffee would be helping. This guy's in rough shape. Don't want to get too much into coffee. The question is really there for people who are surviving on coffee, drinking tons of it all the time. Doesn't drink carbonated drinks. That's good. We don't have to talk about it. Sleep apnea is a fake disease. We don't have to talk about it. You can see my book, Fake Diseases, for more on that. It's not a real problem and it has nothing to do with whatever else is going on. If he's having trouble sleeping, that's just different. No other symptoms so far, but the doctor is suggesting a hormone therapy. Okay, Lucerne. They said small cancer particles on lymph nodes. That's not good. So chemo is not suggested. I thought they would suggest chemo. But hormone therapy is. Yeah, I don't see a reason for hormone therapy here. We're talking about inflammation in the prostate, and now we're talking about lymph. So major nutrient deficiencies, but his weight was obvious. It's too much. So the prostate is in the same area. I'm focusing on this to start with. Now, normally I would actually jump in with a heavier hammer, but Catherine basically recommended the digestion protocol to start with. I'll, I'll read that to you here. And yeah, I think that's a bit soft. I think we could have gone harder and recommended the digestion protocol at the same time as getting him started on the 90 essential nutrients. I probably would have used extra selenium. They have a little bit of weird products available in Australia here, just not every single product that we have is available. But I came up with a cancer recommendation for an Australian the other day, and there, there's a lot to use. Now, maybe I'll go into that in another video, but this case study, we recommended he start with the digestion protocol. Remember, the inflammation is happening here at the end of the digestion system where the probiotics live. So if there's no probiotics here or there's just a bunch of bad bacteria out in the, the bottom of the intestines, that's just going to create a terrible environment here, 
a terrible environment for nutrient reabsorption, especially B vitamins. Waste could be hanging around here and seeping into the blood or lymph or whatever. You know, this is bad. We got to get this stuff out. Don't know what the exact problem is, but with an overweight man, I can assume that's a problem. So on past videos, we have read our blurbs here. She's basically just giving our blurbs, avoid the bad foods, which in a nutshell is the 12 bad foods, although we do it just a little bit differently. No wheat, barley, rye, oats, and I put quinoa on the list, so that would be 13 bad foods already. Glidden only has wheat, barley, rye, oats. I added quinoa, and recently we've added buckwheat as well, so that's six. Pretend you're a celiac and Google what they can and can't eat. Your weight definitely tells us you have a digestion problem, that's correct. Avoid all oils, deep fried food, well done red meats, anything burned, margin processed meats. I've since reworded this a little bit. Processed meats is definitely key here. Again, hot dogs cause butt cancer. It's the nitrates and the nitrites in these processed meats. I think I've taken this line out here too. Avoid the non-organic soy and corn. Avoid the non-organic soy and corn. Because soy and corn were on the 12 bad food list from Dr. Glidden, but Dr. Wallach never really made a big deal about them. And honestly, I don't make a big deal about them either. But all of these things cause inflammation, right? All of these cause inflammation. So we can debate a little bit about the pesticide residue on the corn and the soy. These cause inflammation, especially in the intestines, the grains. Processed meat causes inflammation in the colorectal region. Oil causes inflammation at the cellular level and the vascular level. Oxidized oils, cooking oils, margarine, salad dressing, deep fried food. That's why all of that is on the list. Well done red meat only at high temperature. I think we should rephrase that in the overall message. Only at high temperature. So steak, there's a steak here. Well done red meat or burned animal fats will both also be causing the same type of damage that oil does. Free radical damage. Carbonated drinks with a meal will make sure the meal is not digested properly, causing inflammation, possibly in the digestion tract. If you do it all the time, it's a big problem. Fried food, same reason as the oil. And the skins of baked potatoes, only the skins, only when they're baked, for the same reason, the same basic type of damage as oil in a bottle, fried food, burned animal fats, and so on. So we're not going to go through all this. We've gone through this in past videos, especially the basic weight loss protocol example, which was the first video in this case study series that we've made. She gave him our food videos, the 12 bad food video by Dr. Glidden and the one by Chef Norman. Sorry, this format is all messed up here. It's because I copied and pasted from Instagram. So she's just talking about how those things inflame the intestines. I already said that. She went into a little bit more about gluten and she's basically just giving him the rundown of why these foods are bad. She looks like she's going above and beyond here because cancer is a big scary word. So she's just giving him tons of information, maybe even too much information talking about salt here. Kind of giving a like a whole lecture here. I would say that's too much information, but that's okay. So he said, this is why I'm reaching out. There's so much different information online, and I really don't want my dad to jump on hormone therapy. Well, yeah, no one should go on hormone therapy, and there is a ton of different information online. So Catherine said, we definitely don't recommend hormone therapy. That's true. Lupron is a type of chemotherapy. That's true. She didn't comment on this. It's this tricky legal ground here, by the way. We can't tell people what to do, right, about drugs. We can't legally advise you on what to do about drugs. We can talk about them a little bit, but she knows she's treading precarious legal ground here when we're talking about cancer and the drugs involved. She commented, she said, depression and anxiety are at root mineral deficiencies. I assume that's because she Googled that other drug and it's uh, antidepressant kind of, antipsychotic kind of. So those are mineral deficiencies. Good comment. Don't need to say too much on any of these things. Kind of just giving the rundown. But this was a good one here. She's connecting it to cancer. Those same mineral deficiencies also cause an acidic body, especially calcium deficiency, an acidic body, right? You hear all about, oh, cancer lives in an acidic environment. Well, so do all those bad bacteria. If you've got a whole bunch of bad bacteria living in this region, that's going to be an acid environment. If the gallbladder and stuff up here isn't working properly, that's supposed to make this small intestine alkaline. It's supposed to convert your food material after it comes out of the stomach supposed to be turned into alkaline here. Imagine that being off and then acid going through all of this, damaging all the delicate tissues in here. Talk about acidity. So she's talking about acidity. Mineral deficiencies cause acidity. She said, I'm sure you've heard that cancer cannot live in an alkaline environment. There you go. And she's going in more on the vegan thing here. People don't need to eat alkaline to be alkaline. That's absolutely true. You do not need an alkaline diet. You need to have enough minerals and vitamins too especially the B vitamins, you need to be optimally hydrated, which requires all of the electrolytes. But really, 90 essential nutrients in proper proportions, including the calcium, which is the big one that most programs miss. 
bam, alkaline, reliably. Eating alkaline by itself isn't enough to allow someone to be alkaline. That is the truth. You can try it and see. You can get an alkaline test strip from the pet store. It sells fish. They use them for aquariums. You can see if you're alkaline or not. The body will be alkaline if it's healthy. That's true. Health equals alkalinity. We don't need to make a big deal about this alkaline word, but that's what it means. It means you're healthy. And you can eat meat and drink coffee, etc. and be alkaline. People want to argue about this. You're wrong. You can eat meat. You can drink coffee. You can even drink alcohol and be alkaline as long as you have adequate mineral intakes and your mineral intakes go up if you consume these things. She says it's about the nutrients in the supplements more than anything. That is true. No more than two cups of coffee per day. It's best to get the energy from nutrients. That's true. Many people are dependent on coffee because they're not getting energy from regular metabolism, metabolizing foods and nutrients. Caffeine causes the body to use those minerals that make someone alkaline at a faster rate. Uh, it's true. Probably should have said dump those minerals. It, it speeds up the rate that you dump those minerals, especially calcium, salt, all the electrolytes. Caffeine increases the rate that you lose those minerals. For cancer, four things contribute. I might have said at least four things contribute because I'm blaming EMF as another fifth thing, just a society-wide problem that would contribute to a very serious weakened body like cancer. So nutrient deficiency, multiple. Yes, there's going to be multiple nutrient deficiencies. That's one thing. Bad foods or other toxins, that's two things. Digestion problem caused by these first two things, that's three problems now. And then the digestion problem would cause a circulation problem or a blood sugar problem. Now, I know this is from something that I say normally, but actually nowadays I usually say the four categories are a nutrient problem. So that's both of these things together, bad foods and nutrient deficiencies. That's just one problem. The second problem is a digestion problem. Third problem is a blood sugar problem, which causes a circulation problem. Not a guarantee that there's a blood sugar problem, but practically every case of cancer I've ever seen, a blood sugar problem was obvious. And either way, a circulation problem can be caused by a blood sugar problem, can be caused by a thyroid problem. Both of those are nutrient deficiencies here. So in the end, nutrient deficiencies and or processed foods will cause a circulation problem. Either way, we're looking at at least four problems. That's just to say it's not one nutrient deficiency. It's not one food that causes it. It's not one magic herb that's going to get you out of this either. This is why there will never be one thing that cures cancer, because cancer isn't caused by one thing. We've got to fix all these problems. She said it would be wise for him to eliminate gluten starting today. Absolutely. Don't mess around. For circulation, she said biking or cardio does not really promote circulation specifically. The swing or trampoline target it more. Absolutely true. Better to use a swing and a trampoline or swimming than to do just cardio exercises because the swing and the trampoline and swimming will actually move the lymph around. So she recommended 20 to 40 minutes a day on a swing until the problem is gone. I, that's true. I know these originally came from me, these blurbs. She might have modified them a bit or just saved them. But that's a serious dose of circulation exercise, 20 to 40 minutes a day. Small trampoline. You could use a shaker machine for this, a chi machine. I've written about all this in my book, Fake Diseases. Massage therapy is also good for the lymph. You could do massage therapy. You can do lymphatic massages on yourself, or you can pay a professional for it, or get a friend or family member to do it. Okay, here she's talking more about the sleep apnea and the need for cholesterol and all this stuff. I'm not getting into that here with you. He's asking, so the fixing the digestion issue by avoiding gluten and avoiding oils, right? Now, she didn't really comment on the oils, but it's not really the oils. The oils is because of the inflammation. You've got to get off the gluten so that we can actually start healing the intestines and absorbing stuff. But she said, and using salt. So yeah, making sure that you know that it's more than one thing causing a digestion problem in many cases. He's got a catastrophic problem somewhere. So we want to hit all of this. Make sure you use enough salt. Make sure you're off gluten. And it looks like in addition to the digestion protocol, she recommended ProstFX, our prostate support product, which has extra nutrients and herbs that target the prostate, especially that saw palmetto there, well known to support the prostate. And he's still asking, what else do you suggest? So smart guy. Yeah, I think she under delivered it. I think she could have given a heavier hammer recommendation. And I'm going to come up with a with a heavy pack. I can't call it a cancer pack legally, but I'm going to come up with something that would be more standardized here. So this is me paraphrasing it here. She recommended the digestion pack too. How long would it take to reach Australia? We already have we're already set up in Australia. So here she is telling him about uh, just being a preferred customer in Australia. Just get the stuff in directly from Australia with your account in Australia. I know she's doing this because that makes sure he's one of her customers. So she's getting paid for that directly. I'll get paid too. That's how the business works. But this is her kind of closing the deal. 
She gave him the salt flush, which is good. I always recommend the salt flush. Not going to read it to you here. I have a salt flush video. Check that out. She recommended diatomaceous earth. I think that's a good idea too. So she is really dumping a lot of information on him, but she hasn't given that many recommendations. Only the digestion protocol, a couple of digestion products, ProstFX, prostate support product, and now diatomaceous earth. I do recommend that. That's a good idea, especially for helping to clear out this whole thing, diatomaceous earth. She gave instructions for that. She gave my book, everything you should know about healthy blood sugar. She capped all this off by saying this is a lot of information, of course. We're always here to answer any questions. And we have the outline of everything we talk about in the book, Fake Diseases. That's true. Thank you, Catherine. Gave my link for fake diseases. So then he gives her the information, just his, his shipping information and his name and stuff. So she can make him an account. That's great. Then she tells him about auto ship and how to use it to get free shipping in Australia. That's great. Although I hope she told him that Australian auto ship is $150 minimum. 150 Australian dollars instead of the $99 that we use in Canada and America. He said, thank you. She said, you're welcome. And then he asks about his mom. So then she spent a large part of the conversation on the mom. And here we've got another comment here. He comes in later. It's been about two weeks. Both his mom and dad are on the products as advised. So whatever she said about the mom, she did that too. The whole family is on board here. This is great. It's been two weeks and no bad foods and no gluten. And my father... He's saying while he started on these supplements, he has been urinating very, very frequently. Well, that's good to me because all these difficulty starting urination and weak and interrupted flow of urine, all this stuff. I mean, this sounds like this is loosening up pretty quick. Two weeks. He tried a day without taking the products and he was not urinating as frequently. So just wanted to know this is normal. Yeah, that's normal. So it looks like they fully got started here in December. Usually takes a while, by the way, from the time someone reaches out to us. So the time they get started it usually is a little while. In this case, the first reach out to us was on October 24th. So almost two months after that, they finally started. Very normal. Catherine comes in and said he is probably drinking more fluids, so he's urinating more often. I think that's a little bit simple, Catherine. I think uh, I think it looks like this system is kind of flowing more properly. Whatever. It doesn't matter. And he said, yeah, he usually does drink as much water, but doesn't have that issue. Yeah, so yeah, Catherine's not right here, I don't think. Same water, he says. That means the products are doing something. That's good. Okay, so now this comes up in email. And now this is the first time I'm aware of the case here. Asked you on Instagram about my father. He's 61, stage 4 prostate cancer. We already know that. And I didn't see this before, that when he was doing the alkaline diet, his PSA went down from 18 to 14. So that's good. That shows us that something is working. Doctor said the PSA doesn't matter. Uh... It is debatable how valuable the PSA is, but we're just going to move on. Just wanted to know what list of products do you recommend? I also saw recently that you spoke about a shaker for circulation, which I bought for him. Okay, that's great. He bought the shaker machine. Could also be called a rumble pad. You just stand on it and it rumbles. I'm not recommending this brand here. I'm just saying this is usually what it looks like. So we already saw his information here. Don't need to read that again. And he said that he convinced him to give the natural thing a go before first before chemo super super good now we're not competing against chemo and i said i believe it was me who recommended the digestion products i was wrong i hadn't gone in and checked that case it sounded like me it wasn't me it was catherine got the shaker machine that's excellent it really is excellent and then i asked on the low settings is it painful for him i want to know how bad his circulation is so if on the low rumble settings of the rumble pad or shaker machine if that's painful that means his circulation is super bad he says he feels fine, no pain, just a bit dizzy when coming off. Okay, okay. It's not too bad, that's good. So I focused in on the salt. Catherine already went in on salt in the messages, but make sure he stays topped up on salt, probably responsible for a bit of the dizziness. Talked about the 40 minutes a day, that's the aim. If you got cancer, that's an aim, that's your max. That's awesome goal, 40 minutes. If you can do 20 minutes, two at a time, that's fantastic. You could do less, but I love this dose, 40 minutes a day. And I did say I do want him to do the digestion products before adding in more. I just figured whatever we recommended in the DM, I should kind of stick with that. I do believe it's mostly a digestion problem. With prostate cancer specifically, I do believe it's mostly a digestion problem. Brain cancer is another story. Blood cancer is another story. I would generally like to go a bit faster. So I said we can speed up a bit and keep reevaluating often. And I said you can email as often as you like. I'll double check what's available in Australia and get ready for his next step. I'm missing a part in the conversation here, but next we got an update. 
So my father has been off all the bad foods and is gluten free for over three months. That's fantastic. He's been taking the ultimate microbiome that's in the digestion pack too. So he took that the whole time. And honestly, that's not a bad idea. Like I said, there's so much going on in that rectal region that the microbiome is really, really a great help there and fortifying that environment. So it's no longer toxic. Prost FX, great. Tangy, that's our multi-nutrient, multivitamin. Essential fatty acids, great. Osteo. So he's on the 90 essential nutrients. These three products, that's the 90 essential nutrients. You can see the video about how to add up the 90 in products, by the way. Just made that recently. He's been on the diatomaceous earth. He goes on the body shaker machine for 20 to 40 minutes per day. Honestly, awesome. He did, So he did the protocol here. And what did we do? We did the 90 plus extra prostate support and extra digestion support, the microbiome. That's a great little protocol there, actually. He has lost a lot of weight and feels good. No pains, thank God. Awesome. So his PSA has gone down by half since about six to seven months ago. That's fantastic. Great. He only did the hormone therapy in December. Now they're saying let's do radiation just to make sure. Ha, huh, just to make sure. Is hormone therapy just holds or shrinks cancer cells? Well, okay, I'm not giving the hormone therapy any credit here. This man has been doing proper nutrition. And I would do proper nutrition just to make sure, not radiation. Radiation contributes to cancer, guys. He feels good and believes he is fine, but they are making him worry. Yeah, this is bad. Stress is bad. Stress is toxic. Making him worry, saying if he doesn't do radiation, there is a chance it becomes aggressive and spreads. Then it will be too late. Fear mongerers, these doctors. Weird response, though, hey? You see good results. Hey, your PSA went down by half. You lost a lot of weight. You feel good. You got no pain. Let's radiate him, just in case. What? Even when they get a good result, they still want to go in with the radiation. You get a bad result, they want radiation. You get a good result, they want radiation. Talk about trigger happy, jeez. So, not to discount this completely, it is possible to spread. It's a possibility. It can get in the blood, it can get in the lymph. That's true. But, by all measures here, he's improving. So, I would assume he's going to keep improving. They want to assume that it's going to come back. Well, that's backwards. And he has a question here from experience with your clients. What do you think about this? Is there a way to actually find out if he still has cancer? Thank you. Okay, here's my response to that email. This is great news! Exclamation mark. It is great news. Celebrate this. I think the doctors are being silly. Yeah, I agree with myself. I see absolutely no reason to be aggressive if he is clearly improving. I would imagine he will continue improving. As for finding out if it is spread, to my knowledge, the way prostate cancer spreads is by those cells getting into the blood or lymph. Blood can be tested, no problem. Have regular blood work done so you can see if there's any problem. Yeah, go ahead and get blood work done. The main way it's going to get into your body is through the blood. Test the blood. Now, for the lymph, I just copy and pasted this from Google. Swollen lymphs, basically. How to tell if you have a lymphatic problem? Well, swelling of a part of the arm or the leg, including fingers or toes. So do you have any swelling? Do you have a feeling of heaviness or tightness? Do you have a restricted range of motion? Do you have recurring infections? Do you have hardening and thickening of the skin? According to his results above, it just seems he's getting better. I didn't hear any of this stuff. He's already improving. I've never seen someone who improves their symptoms, markers, tumors, etc. I've never seen them remiss significantly. This is true. Meaning, once someone is going in the right direction, we trust that the body now has what it needs to do all of its stuff properly. And it's just not logical to assume that something scary will happen at this point. So yeah, if I've seen someone have progress in cancer, even if they're not using our program, all kinds of natural programs that people use, once they start to do better, I've never seen anybody just plummet back into full-blown cancer. I've never seen it become an emergency again. Might have a couple of symptoms come back, tumor might grow a little bit before it gets smaller, whatever, but I've never seen them remiss significantly. Never seen them go backwards significantly. And he's only 61. He's only 61. He's younger than my parents. So prostate cancer is already slow growing and extremely unlikely to kill you. And that's especially true for someone. He's still a young man. 61. So I said, I have a ton of confidence that he will just get better. It's true. He's already getting better. Why wouldn't he keep getting better? No reason to assume that he would get worse. That's just doctor ignorance. It's true. And I did ask him if I could use this case for a video here. He did say yes in another email. And I just said, great, you did great. You went above and beyond. Uh, he could have gone even more above and beyond, but honestly, I'm not that worried with prostate cancer. Like I said, it is slow growing. 
So he did go above and beyond. He did the 90. He did extra prostate support, extra digestion support. The shaker machine is above and beyond. I love the shaker machine. Not enough people use a lymphatic machine. Great idea if you have a serious health problem. Great idea anyways. Honestly, you can stand on it and watch TV and get a circulation exercise. So we got the final message here. Doctors are crediting the hormone therapy that shrunk the cancer. And now the radiation is for precautions. Well, it's a crazy precaution. So he was already getting some results here with the vegan diet. Then I found you. Good timing, he found us. That's great. After our advice, he started eating meat, eggs, and some dairy and went gluten-free. That's great. These are power foods, healing foods, especially the eggs here. He did the hormone therapy at that same time. But during this whole time, he hasn't eaten any bad food. He's been on the nutrients. Doesn't know if it was the hormone therapy or the diet or both. Yeah, I'm crediting the diet and the nutrients here. And I asked him also, how's your mom doing? Just because I saw that he was asking about her at the same time. Mom is much better too. Oh, great. Thanks for asking. She's on the supplements and has seen some great changes, which is awesome. That's fantastic. So this seems like a great little success story. We can't use the word cure here, but it looks like he's definitely in the right direction. I see no reason why he won't just continue to improve. Hopefully they keep up these habits. The fact that his wife is doing it at the same time makes it a lot easier. They can do it together, obviously. The fact that they got the support of their son is just incredible here. Remember, none of this was treatment. We didn't treat anything. Doctors did some treatment. They want to do more treatment. We don't like treatment, and we're not licensed to actually do that. So we didn't need any tests. We didn't need any drugs. We didn't need any surgeries. And we got our prostate result. Hallelujah. Happy to share this with you guys. If you know anyone with prostate cancer, you can show them this. Let them know. It is very straightforward to get the inflammation down, to clean out the digestion system, top up the body on nutrients so it can work properly. Not a difficult thing. Will take a while. Takes a few months at least. And I didn't get into any of the risks of the various prostate exams and surgeries that uh, they might try and push on you, but all of them are definitely worth avoiding. That's a discussion for another day. And before I go here, just letting you know about our most recent release, Primates Medical and Surgical Management for Dr. Wallach. This is actually part of his big textbook, Diseases of Exotic Animals. And I actually included his cystic fibrosis study from 1989, where he did 1700 autopsies on children and connected cystic fibrosis, muscular dystrophy, sudden infant death syndrome, and what they call Keyshawn disease or cardiomyopathy heart attack. That study alone costs 40 bucks, so it's pretty good value in this book, $22.99 on Amazon. Of course, you can see this book and all of my books and our cookbook, Dr. Wallach's Cooking Without the Bad Foods. You can see all of that on noticebooks.org. And you can see the free versions of all of my books in audio and video book format. All of that's on the website. Now, prostate cancer is not mentioned in the primate book because monkeys do not get prostate cancer as long as they're eating the monkey pellets because it has the nutrients that they need for cells to divide properly and so on. This is not an everyday read, it is a textbook, but for the Dr. Wallach fans, the Wallach warriors out there, I'm really proud of bringing this book to market. It looks great, and there's lots of interesting connections with humans and primates, of course. So that's all I've got for today. If you've got a case study that you would like me to cover in this way, especially if you got a good result or even a bad result, let me know in the comments or email, and I'll see what I can do. Appreciate you guys. Until next time.